Next slide tonight, we received a petition correspondence from the public. Ms. Barry, do we have speakers tonight? Yes, we have a few. Ms. Hotep? Good evening. My name is Melody Hotek, and I live at 1879 Catlett Mountain Road in Farm Royal. Um, I want to thank you for the opportunity to speak to you tonight. I stand here as president of the Front Royal Warren County Tree Stewards. Um, <laughs> am I getting feedback? Um, I'm so glad that you're recognizing David Means. I uh, didn't realize I was going to be going first before the award, but um, <coughs> excuse me. he's made enormous contributions to the town and many years on the Urban Forestry Advisory Commission. Uh, the tree stewards are also grateful for all the time that he has donated to our nonprofit. Uh, he's taught us and the public all of his, using his expertise, all of his skills on tree care and uh, guide, help guide our organization. I don't know if you know David, but he's extremely passionate about trees and about our community. And we've all benefited greatly from that. Um, very, very lucky to have him in our corner. On behalf of the tree stewards, I'd also like to acknowledge how much we're going to miss the departure of Ann Rose, the Horktown horticulturist. Um, she's done equally as much for the town, and we're going to miss her a lot. Um, we work closely with her and benefit from from her expertise, wishing her well on her retirement. Our organization and others, like the Beautification Committee of Front Royal, uh, urge you to find a qualified uh, candidate equal to Ann Rose, a horticulturist or an um, arborist, and try to fill that position as quickly as possible. Um, I'm sure you're well aware of how much that adds to the town. Losing both David and Anne in the same year leaves a really big gap in our partnerships. In the meantime, please know that the tree stewards will continue our work, educating the public about the value of trees and their care. And in our work sessions, we will keep working on public trees around town. If there's anything we can do to help the town, just let us know. And we want to ask you for your continued support. And I thank you. Thank you. Chris Ramsey. Good evening. My name is Chris Ramsey. I reside at 400 Fulton Lane, Front Royal, Virginia. Mr. Mayor, members of council, it appears to me that we have a conflict between town policy and town code. It revolves around the use of common everyday terms that have implications and consequences. The terms that I speak of is water and sewer tap fees versus water and sewer access fees. This is not new territory, but with the recent changes, they now have consequences. In the town business of 25 years ago, a person desiring to build a house in town front oil went into the town. If he was seeking to utilize the water and sewer services of the town, he went to the town hall, filled out an application, paid the tap fees, and the town at its convenience did exactly that. It installed the taps. Simultaneously, though, if the lot happened to be in a development where the taps had already been made as required by code, the applicant was given a credit for that work that had already been done. It wasn't exactly equitable, but it was a token towards those costs. In the wisdom of prior councils, that practice was changed because it was costing the town more to make the taps than what the tap fees were that they collected. The town has continued to collect the fees, which have erroneously been referred to as tap fees, when in reality they were access slash availability fees. People continued to, to refer to them as tap fees, which has brought us to where we are today. 
Do we want to go back to the situation where we no longer ensure equitable dealings when it comes to what people seeking the same services within the town pay, pay for those services? If I'm paying tap fees, I'm like everybody else. I want to know where my taps are. But that's not what the policy has been. I don't know what the policy has been. People felt they had been misled. So rather than changing the wording on the forms to access fees, we are going to actually do the work at no charge for those who feel they have been misled at the expense of those who properly understood the system. Where our previously, previous policy was that the town charged everyone equally for access to the water and sewer facilities, and each applicant was responsible for extending their individual water and sewer lines to the town mains in the street, the town is now running the connecting lines to the individual properties at the expense of the rest of the town users, namely you and me. Unless, if perchance, you buy a lot in a recent development that already has the connecting lines run to your lot, as required by code, then you have the unique opportunity to pay for everyone else who did not do the same. I totally understand the difference between water and sewer tap fees, water and sewer access fees, and I ask that you acknowledge the difference as well and rectify the inequity that has come to light. I totally welcome the town to make all the water and sewer tap fees in town, everyone equally. I, I, but to do it for free for some, at the same time charge others, is not right. And when I say all, I mean all. The code is one thing and the policy has changed to dictate another. In conclusion, I would ask the town attorney, is this sustainable if challenged? Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. John Jerome. Good evening. My name is John Jerome. I live at 28 Ashland Court. Uh, a couple of things. I don't know if I stand back here. Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, a couple of things I wanted to, to mention. Um, this, I recently moved here about 15, 16 months ago. And I lived near Leech Run Parkway. And come snow time, um, that, those sidewalks, both sides are ignored. Um, that doesn't just create a danger for some pedestrians like me. But it also creates a danger for uh, students, who some of uh, whom walk to the, uh, to the middle school back and forth. And it's not only that they have to trudge through uh, snow and slush and snow that has been pushed off the road into the sidewalks, but when the weather warms up, um, it starts to melt. And then if you're walking, uh, when it starts, the sun's going down, you have black ice and it's very slippery. And I tried bringing this to the attention of the last administration, and I had success once. Um, I think the mayor contacted last year, the mayor was here last year, contacted somebody, and, and the next snowstorm they had removed the snow. But after that, it, you know, just like this last snow, it just stayed there. And so I wanted to um, make the mayor, the new mayor aware of this, and, and the town council, and uh, also ask, I noticed, you know, this I noticed by, by walking, but, you know, when you're driving through town, you also notice that uh, uh, sidewalks in front of people's houses and businesses are not shoveled. Now, other places I've lived, there's been an ordinance, I don't know, I assume there's one in Front Royal, that if the sidewalk is in front of one's house or one's business, it's their obligation to remove the snow. And that needs to be enforced. The other thing that needs to be enforced is we have stop signs here. And the, the, the police department, uh, I commend them on their diligence and their zealousness about uh, speed speeding uh, in 25 mile an hour zones. And that's enforced, and it's, you know it's enforced because people behave, especially on, leash, on, on um, uh, John Marshall. Uh, they will go 25 miles an hour as painful as it is. But virtually nobody behaves and obeys, respects the stop signs in this community. Nor turning on red, stopping and then taking your right turn. 
And I, and I, and I plead with the town council and with the mayor, this law, these laws need to be enforced. And today, you know, I don't think it almost came. Today something happened. And I just got pretty tired of watching not only people going through stop signs, but going through stop signs with impunity, not even attempting to slow down in their forty or fifty thousand dollar truck as they blow past the stop sign on the top of Colonial Drive, right off John Marshall. And I've noticed this throughout front line as well. So um, I, those are the basically the two things: the snow removal and please enforce. Stop signs. Once people start getting some tickets for this, okay, things will improve. And I'm not telling you something that I've seen you haven't. Just go back in your recent memory. When was the last time you saw somebody stop? And and if you ask one or two people here, ask when the last time you stopped at a stop sign. That's all. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Tinker, could you look at this, yeah, please? Yeah. Hey, John. Um, also, again, my contact. I'll send you some information. Okay, all right, thank you. Thank you so much. Linda Allen. Oh. <laughs> I'm Linda Allen, 15 Massey Street, Front Royal. Good evening, Mayor, to you all. Members of town council and staff. There are three points I want to cover this evening. The first point is a thank you. The second point is a fact offered to prevent a misconception about the past role of EDA in town development. The third point is an invitation to the program that we held at Sam Lewis Public Library on economic development. All three points are related to economic development, in essence, and the cooperation needed from all of us if we are to succeed in resolving our separate issues as well as our joint difficulties. Both the town and the EDA are or will struggle with expensive projects. For the town, one example is I and I projects. Another large cost will be fixing the wastewater plant. The EDA will struggle to stay afloat financially and we directly do influence that situation. The town will also struggle to enhance economic growth, which costs money too, among the negative issues we must address and pay for it. So first, thank you, Mayor T. Walt, for revisiting the EDA meeting. I believe that granting worth and respect to the EDA is significant and necessary. Every time I hear the word lawyer connected to the town, an EDA joint issue at the police station, I think of the sign about brothers in the Civil War on opposite sides. Driven apart. We likewise have a community in which we are known to each other, and the method for problem solving has turned to lawyers, which means that we can be driven apart, get will destroyed, when we can use our words directly with one another to negotiate settlements. That may produce economic growth, which affects the tax rates we pay if we don't have economic growth. Second, most of the businesses in town, downtown from oil, and even in the surrounding areas of the town, now about by means other than the EDA. Therefore, the town having a separate EDA is not necessary for commercial, industrial, business development. I'm not using names to illustrate this fact because I didn't have time to get permission to explain some of the projects with the names of the persons used in these independent projects. In this effort, however, to thrive and prosper together, we are all ambassadors for the repute of our town which means that every one of us has a role in presenting our town to its best advantage and aiding effort to sell desirable properties. The third point is an invitation to participate in economic development, be that ever so casual, and by having fun, sharing ideas on February 6th at Samuels Public Library, 6 p.m. to 7.45 p.m. in a program called You Are the Town <coughs> County Planner what goes in our available spaces. Two expert planners will be on hand. Doug Parsons is expected to come, as is Frank Bogas, with his analysis of our downtown front row situation. We want the public, property owners, shopkeepers, and investors to come. It will have background information available about actual properties that are highly marketable, 
you'll learn the way to research those properties. And given that town council has to make decisions about economic development, we want you to come, share your hopes and knowledge, and join enterprise that can produce viable results. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. That was our last speaker, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Does anyone else would like to speak tonight? We'll go ahead and sign up. Okay. Next item on our agenda tonight is uh, <clears throat> reports from the special committees of town official or interim town manager. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just before I get on my report, I just want to clarify one point. Ms. Allen, was that meeting at 6 p.m.? Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Mayor, I have a few items, not a, not a lot to go over. Um, I did want to recognize um, some town staff tonight, and we have uh, one member actually here, or two members here tonight. One in particular, uh, Alyssa Scott. I wanted to formally recognize her in front of council. Uh, Ms. Scott received the designation of Certified Professional Public Buyer from the Universal Public Procurement Certification Council. Um, that's a big deal. Um, we're trying to institute greater policies as, a, as it involves procurement. Both um, uh, B.J. Wilson has other certifications and, and uh, Ms. Scott has a couple certifications in procurement. This extra level of certification and training, Mr. Mayor, uh, goes a long way for our town. I just wanted to publicly recognize and, and commend her for, for the time it took to get that designation. Also, Mr. Mayor, I wanted to recognize Laura McIntosh Unfortunately, she uh, went home ill today. Um, this is special to me, uh, Mr. Mayor. I remember my mother as a young child commuting to James Madison University to get her master's degree after working a full day's job. And um, Laura McIntosh, who is uh, our risk manager, uh, deputy uh, HR director, is graduated and received a bachelor's of science in business administration with a major in human resource management from Capella University. Um, she took a challenge from former uh, town manager Joe Waltz a couple years ago, and she latched onto it, and she's raising uh, two small children, but um, after a full day's work, she goes and, and gets a college degree. I just think that's important for, for you, Mr. Uh, members of council, and for the community to know. Uh, another item, uh, Mr. Mayor and members of council, you know, this, uh, you know, it's part of uh, individuals' daily activities um, in public works, they have rotating shifts. They're required to work all kinds of hours. And yes, we have waterline breaks on Christmas Eve. And yes, we have waterline breaks on Christmas Day and on New Year's Eve. And um, this year was <laughs> no different as Murphy's Law would have it. We had a significant um, a waterline break um, on Christmas, uh, Christmas Day, 2 a.m. Um, and so while we were home, uh, having breakfast with our family. Uh, there was a crew of, of close to a dozen uh, men and women out working in the ditches repairing a water line and I just wanted to recognize their names. Um, Robbie Boyer, uh, Director of Public Works, came in that day as well. Uh, Tony Rogers, James Thomas, Chris Riley, Ryan Silvius, Garrett Matthews, Matt Winter, Brent Hankins, Alan Pack, Bobby Williams, and Carl Greeley. Uh, I just wanted to draw their, their names out in the public, Mr. Mayor, and thank them. Uh, as it relates to some activities in the town, um, I'm really pleased to, uh, to let council and citizens know about our Envisioning Village Commons event that's coming up. Uh, if you're a business owner or property owner in the downtown historic district, um, there will be a moderated uh, meeting with the goal of developing policies and procedures for events and street closures on Main Street specifically the Village Commons area and the gazebo area. Um, findings will be presented to this town council for final, final decision. Uh, your participation and voice will be greatly appreciated on Thursday, January 16th, the 30th of January, and February 13th at 6 p.m. in the Warren County Community Center. Uh, we have some holiday closings. I'm sorry, we have some street closings. Um, we're all very uh, aware of the uh, the crosswalks, the safety crosswalks that are being installed on Kerfoot Avenue. The first one has been installed. It was completed last week and we're installing the second one this week. Uh, once this work is complete, uh, we'll have to go back and, and um, install asphalt paths to the stairs and the crosswalk signs. 
Herford uh, will be closed most of this week to complete the project. Uh, as you're aware, uh, members of council, about the significant waterline break I just mentioned on Washington Avenue, the waterline relocation on Washington Avenue will begin on Wednesday, January 15th, and will uh, take about two weeks depending on the weather. Uh, there'll be time when one block of Braxton Road and one block of Happy Creek Road will be closed, not at the same time, um, and traffic will be detoured around the block. Uh, we're putting out a public notice for this part of the work soon, as we'll know um, as soon as we know which days will be affected. And lastly, Mr. Mayor, members of council, as it relates to some holiday closings, uh, the town business offices will be closed on Monday, January 20th, 2020, in observance of Martin Luther King Day Jr., or Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Trash and recycling collection, uh, regularly scheduled for Monday, uh, will be collected on Wednesday the 22nd. All of the regular trash and recycling collection days will remain the same this week. There'll be no yard waste collected this week. Christmas trees will be collected on Wednesday, January 8th, I'm sorry, uh, the 15th, the 29th and, and uh, 2020. Trees must be placed at the curb and free of ornaments, tinsel, stands. Trees with root balls will not, um, will not be collected. Yard waste collection will end on January 29th and will resume on March 25th, 2020. Um, Mr. Mayor, members of council, that's all I have for my report. Uh, thank you. Uh, I, we do appreciate our employees, and I, I like to give them a round of applause here tonight for the service that they do.
The next thing I have here this evening is Mayor. Uh, before I was going to speak before, this is the, really the first official meeting of 2020. So I'd like to read some things that I'd like to see done by this castle uh, and the town manager this coming year, and including myself. I'd like to meet with board supervisors about how we can obtain a closer and a closer, closer relationship with the board and work towards giving the citizens a better outlook for the future because we're all citizens of North County. So I'd like to get that together one day and we can talk about some issues with that. Second thing I'd like to ask the town council to work towards repair of our I-9 problem, the inflow and infiltration, which is connected to our sewer system. And I'd like to ask the council to set aside another three million dollars from the unrestricted sewer funds for these repairs. We're already spending quite a bit of money, but I think that it's very important that, that we continue to work towards getting these, these problems resolved so that we can satisfy the DEQ and the things that they're doing. The third thing I'd like to ask tonight is work towards the repair or replacement of our failing infrastructure. Streets, curbs and gutters, sidewalks, storm drains, bridges, and etc. I would ask the council to borrow $3 million for these repairs and the money to be paid back through our yearly highway maintenance funds allotted from the fee lot that we receive each, each year in the repair and maintenance of our streets. Work to enhance it, our tourism program by working closely with our director and our new tourism board. Work towards bringing new businesses into the town to help grow our economy and set up an economy development committee for this purpose. Work towards enhancing North Royal Avenue, South Royal Avenue, Commerce Avenue to be more presentable to our citizens and our tourists as they come through the town of Front Royal. Work towards making Front Royal safer for us pedestrians that walk our streets on a daily basis and at night when it's hard to see the pedestrian walking in, in some areas. I'd like to work with the developers to bring in a new 55 and older community for retirees. This is something that I have talked to a couple of developers and they're very interested in that and I'm hoping that we can get some of them working towards that goal for the town of Fort Royal and the older community in Fort Royal at this time. Work with the police department to make Fort Royal safer for all people. I'd like to set up a town hall meeting once a month on the third Thursday evening at town hall at the town Hall Conference Center, and I'd like to start that the first uh, third, third Sunday. I said I get right. Third Thursday uh, in the month of February, and I'd like to get that set up immediately if we can and get it advertised. And the last thing I'd like to say is I'd like to work for bringing it, uh, on board a new town manager as soon as we can get things facilitated and get the names back and hire someone to take the new town manager's position. Thank you, Mr. That includes my report. Next item is proposal or addition to leases of items to the agenda. Mr. Mayor, I do not obviously have additions or deletions, but a few items on your agenda if council wanted to take a look and speaking with the town manager. On 7B, I've emailed this to council. The RK and K, there was a typo. It reflected county. It's been updated to now say town, obviously. On number 11, we've received an amended agenda item cover, which includes the winterization of the Afton Inn. That's in your email. It's also in the box. And on number 12, you've received the scope of services. We just received that this afternoon. That also is on the box and in your email. And press, if you need that, or any member of the public, you can let me know. Um, I believe each member of the press has received it. But if anyone from the public would need that, just let me know. I'll get that to you after the meeting. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Next item on our agenda tonight is the consent agenda. Uh, we have three items of budget amendment for broadcast communication hardware, Happy Creek Road Phase 2 preliminary engineering consultant, audit and finance committee uh, appointees. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I move to approve the consent, to, consent agenda items as presented. Second. And we have a motion and a second on, on the floor. Uh, Ms. Barry, can I have a roll call? Mr. Gillespie? Yes. Mr. Hallway is absent. Mr. Mezza? Yes. Mr. Selah? 
Yes. Emma Thompson. Yes. Thank you. Uh, to clarify one thing, on the Audit and Finance Committee, uh, it would be Jake Meza and Gary Gillespie. Uh, I was taken off and Mr. Gillespie was replaced, took my place on that committee. Next, next item tonight is council approval, amendment to the budget for outstanding purchase orders. Ms. Berry, could you read the summary, please? Yes, sir. Council's request to adopt on the second and final reading an amendment to the budget in the amount of $11 million, one hundred eighty-two thousand. dollars 627 for a list of outstanding purchase orders that need to be carried forward to the budget to complete unfinished projects. Do we have a motion? Mr. Mayor, I move the council adopt on the second final reading an, an amendment to the FY 2019-2020 budget in the amount of $11,182,627.66 for the outstanding purchase orders to be carried forward to the FY 2019-2020 2020 budget cycle to complete unfinished projects as presented. Second. Any discussion on the budget? No, I broke off, please. Mr. Gillespie? Yes. Mr. Meza? Yes. Mr. Siegel? Yes. And Ms. Thompson? Yes. Thank you. Motion carried. Next item tonight is a council approval in order to amend the town code section 134-71A1E pertaining to personal gratuity for business entry, entries. Uh, Ms. Berry, could you read the summary? Yes, sir. In September 2019, Council adopted an amendment to the code pertaining to utility account payments and termination of service in an effort to decrease the town's bad debt on utility accounts. During this time, it's come to the attention of staff that some commercial users have no ability to provide a personal guarantee without a legal liability challenge. It's also identified that commercial users were not included in the town's acceptable credit history waiver or utility deposit. Therefore, council is requested to adopt an ordinance to remove section 13471 pertaining to the personal guarantee for business entities in its entirety and to remove the word residential and service location deposit waiver to allow commercial service locations to be included in the waiver deposits as presented. The, since the public hearing on December 9th, section 13471A, 4A, and B was identified by staff as also requiring change to the interest and refunds for commercial users so they have the ability to be refunded deposits if they have good credit after one year. Thank you very much. Mr. Mayor, I move that council adopt on its second and final reading an ordinance to remove town code section 134.7a.1. E, pertaining to personal guarantee for business entities in its entirety, and to remove the word residential and service location deposit waiver to allow commercial service locations to be included in the waiver of deposits, and 13471A, 4A, and B to allow commercial users the ability to be refunded deposits if they have good credit after one year as presented. Second. Have a motion. Second. Any discussion? Yes, Mr. Mayor, uh, this is the second reading. I'll uh, recap everything for the first time, but uh, again, this just cleans up the language, still allows for personal guarantees, uh, uh, letters of credit to ensure that um, to ensure that payment will be made for any utilities expense either through commercial or residential users. Okay. Anyone else? Ms. Fair, can I have a roll call, please? Mr. Gillespie? Yes. Mr. Meza? Yes. Mr. Seelong? Yes. And Ms. Thompson? Yes. Thank you. Motion carried. I have 10 our agenda tonight. Council approved the downtown revitalization area engineering and architectural services. Ms. Berry. Council is requested to approve a contract for engineering and landscape architecture services with EPR in the amount of $70,000 to prepare a concept conceptual parking, streetscape, and property acquisition plan for the downtown revitalization area with funds allocated from the <coughs> Community Development Block Grant. Thank you very much. Mr. Mayor, I move the council approve the contract for engineering and landscaping, architectural services with EPR, in the amount of $70,000 to prepare a conceptual parking, streetscape, and property acquisition plan for the downtown revitalization area with funds allocated from the Community Development Block Grant. Second. We've got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Yes, Mr. Mayor, I just wanted to reiterate that this is $70,000 from the Community Development Block Grant and not uh, from taxpayer dollars. Anyone else? 
Ms. Baird, can I have a roll call, please? Mr. Gillespie? Yes. Mr. Meza? Yes. Mr. Seelock? Yes. And Ms. Thompson? Yes, thank you. Next item on our agenda is a budget amendment to executive search for health insurance consultant and future funding for the Happy Creek Properties Acquisition. Ms. Baird. And Council, if you know, this is the one that was updated within your box and your Council is requested to approve a budget amendment in the amount of $101,000 to allocate $21,000 for health insurance consultant, $25,000 for executive search form, $40,000 for possible future acquisition of property for Happy Creek Road Phase 2, and $15,000 for winterization of the Afton Inn. Meals tax and sales tax are tracking above the FY20 budgeted amounts. It's anticipated that revenue received during the FY20 will accommodate the proposed budget amendment. And the motion, of course, is updated as well. There you go, motion. Mr. Mayor, I move the council approve a budget amendment in the amount of $101,000 to allocate $21,000 for the health insurance consultant, $25,000 for the executive search firm, $40,000 for the possible future acquisition of property from Half Peak Road Phase 2, and $15,000 for the winterization of Afton Inn by utilizing additional funds collected in FY20 bill tax revenue line item by $50,500. The sales tax line item, $50,500, and transferring $40,000 from these revenues to the Community Development Fund for Hat Creek Road Phase 2. Second. Mr. Garrett, did you say second? Okay. We have a motion to second. Uh, any discussion? Yes, Mr. Mayor. I know that there have been a few emails uh, in a lot of part today, and I haven't had a time to, to, to get up to speed with them. Now, um, I feel confident with everything in the original motion. Um, I, the line item for winterization of the Afton Inn, um, I, wasn't, um, I wasn't aware, uh, I was aware of discussions around that. I wasn't aware that council was ready to move forward on that, so I would, I would like to know um, if I can, if you're a town manager, there was an update on that that I missed, um, and why it was added to this motion. Yeah, thank you. Uh, well, Mr. Mayor, can we address the question, Mr. Mayor? Sure. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. That's a good question, and, and I think it's important to clarify this matter. Uh, what this motion is, this is the budget amendments in order to prepare to have any action taken in the future. So, for instance, you'll notice the next motion you'll be having is to retain the services of an HR firm. Uh, so this is preparing for that in the budget. Our meals uh, tax and our sales tax was tracking higher. So the finance director and I felt, let's go ahead and do it all in one motion, get everything moved in the event that council decides in the future to do any of these other items. For instance, a good example is the uh, acquisition of property for Happy Creek Phase 2. We have no property identified. But when we do have property identified, we'll have money allocated in that line item in preparation. So we won't have to keep coming back to council time and time again for each individual budget amendment. And you are correct. The uh, $15,000 for winterization, there has been no action from council, no decision on council. This is in preparation should council wish to do that. And the line item is going to go, or the, that, that $15,000 is going to go on building and grounds, professional services. In the event the council decides not to winterize, that money will stay in that account and be shifted over next year. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chief. I suspected as much, so I felt comfortable reading the motion. I just wanted to clarify that before we voted. Yeah. Anyone else? Ms. Barry, get a roll call, please. Mr. Gillespie? Yes. Mr. Meza? Yes. Mr. Seelock? Yes. And Ms. Thompson? Yes, thank you. Motion carried. Next item of the night is council approval, health insurance consulting services. Ms. Berry. Council is requested to approve the award of health insurance consulting services to Gallagher in the amount of $40,000 with an optional $2,500 portal. Do hear a motion? I uh, move that council approve the award of health insurance consulting services to Gallagher in the amount of $40,000 with an optional $2,500 portal. Do hear a second? Second. Any discussion? Yes, Mr. Mayor, I am excited about this engagement. Um, I think since I've been on council, um, I've talked about uh, the evaluation of our uh, compensation through our compensation studies and our benefits. Um, we've made a few attempts at these. 
uh, over the past few years. It, it's a, uh, an all-encompassing, difficult topic to get into, um, but I'm confident that the, the firm that we're engaging uh, is going to do in-depth analysis to help make recommendations, not for changing benefits or health insurance necessarily for today, but a strategic plan moving forward. Our health insurance premiums can go up uh, anywhere from you know, 5% annually to 15% 15, uh, 15 or more annually, it just depends. Um, and it's a fluctuation that we don't have a lot of control over. Um, and I think that the due diligence on counsel side, uh, you know, and, and asking Mr. T.J. to move forward on this is to make sure that we have some sort of stable plan that we can implement and work towards um, over the next few years so that we're not surprised by hundreds of thousands of dollars and over the few years, millions of dollars of increases um, in benefits that we did not plan for or account for. So I think that this is going to be money well spent and I'm looking forward to seeing the results uh, of the analysis. Anyone else? Ms. Barrett, roll call, please. Mr. Gillespie? Yes. Mr. Mehta? Yes. Mr. Seelow? Yes. And Ms. Thompson? Yes. Thank you. Uh, that concludes our regular council meeting minutes this evening. Um, we're going into a closed uh, a work session and into a closed meeting uh, after this meeting here this evening. Uh, do we want to leave the meeting open in case there's some decision made in our closed meeting? I don't believe so, Mr. Mayor. I don't think so. No, sir. Okay. Did I hear a motion to uh, adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. That ends our meeting this evening. I will go into a closed into a work session.